You know what that tastes like, ladies and gentlemen? That tastes like spooky season. That's right. We are in to the best time of the year. I don't care. It's not up for debate. Spooky season is in full force, and we are balls deep in it, as we should be, because it's amazing. And welcome back to another episode of Sipping What's In The Podcast, where we talk about stuff and things and things, stuff that are important to everybody all across the world. That's right. You can say it with me if you want. Believe it in your soul, because it is proven by people far, far smarter than us. Lots of scientists. I don't know how many, but we're going to say a gaggle of scientists proved it. And we're the number one podcast of such and things, according to them. So don't question it. Believe it. Accept it. Let it be. Bask in it. But we're back for another episode, another spooky, spooky episode. We're going to talk about some things that go bump in the night and all kinds of stuff. But without further ado, let's welcome our esteemed colleague, the one, the only, Mr. Christian. <laughs> feels good to be back for another episode uh we got some things to talk about so i guess we'll just uh, dive right in yeah i'm gonna dive right in all right but what we'd like to do we may have to have christian turn up just a little bit not a problem at all okay sweet christian's a little low but we're we're good now what we'd like to do start every episode we'd like to talk about what we're watching reading listening to or playing this past week so i'll start since christian did it last week for me we did something fun in all of my years in this plane of existence I have never been to a casino, and neither has my wife. Her birthday, an actual significant birthday, uh, is vast, fastly approaching. And um, so we did like an early little celebration for it. And me, her, and a group of friends went to a casino for the first time. So I got to experience the casino. It was interesting. It was uh, smoky, which was weird. It gave oh. me literally like, if you've ever been to a bar or a club, it gave me real hardcore, like, old school, like, I'm going to say, like, early 2000s club vibe. But, like, in certain parts. But uh, other than that, like, the gambling was cool. It's definitely a slippery slope. We had, like, a set amount. We didn't take, like, much to gamble. It was just, like, a set amount. It's like, hey, we can spend this. Pretty much just plan on losing it. Have fun. And that's it. And, like, it was, it was still fun, though. Like, I can definitely see how people could just go in there and go ham. I didn't have the balls to do roulette <laughs> or blackjack or anything like that because they had like a minimum buy, and I was like, nah, bro, I'm good. I'm just going to stick to these cheap-ass slots and call it a day. And, uh, yeah, it was it was fun, though. Some people were in there going ham, bro. Like, you would walk by and see, like, their balance. I'm like, god dang. Like, let me have a dollar. Like, that's insane. What are you doing? <laughs> Quit pissing that away. But uh, it's interesting, and definitely I would go back. It's not something I would do all the time, 100%, but, I mean, it, it's fun for, like, a getaway. Uh, I will say though, our service sucked because as long as you're gambling, the uh, waitresses will come around and offer you to get you drinks and stuff for free as long as you're at a machine like gambling. So a lot of times you just sit there and you're kind of like bullshit and then you're like hanging out and you like spin and then you kind of bullshit a little more. And like as long as you're kind of playing, they would come around. But the, the hotel casino we stayed at, we didn't, they didn't show up like at all. They showed up when we were like upstairs and then when we went downstairs, we're like all the action really was. Then they just didn't really show up. And then we went to like, a neighboring casino and uh, those waitresses just come around, but they were assholes. Like one of them just left me forever waiting really? on like getting a drink. And I was like, bro, can I have a beverage please? Your boy's parched. But uh, it was a good time. So we did that. Um, and then other than that, I have played more Mortal Kombat, been playing Invasion. I'm trying to wrap it up and uh, enjoy it. I will say I played Melina uh, from a viewer request and I kind of actually dug Melina. So she may, I may dabble with some Melina. She's fine, fast character. Past that, to keep this short and simple, I, uh, I've i been watching some spooky movies. We talked about it on the last episode. We did indeed start our spooky season with Hollow Man. I don't know why I put a, why I made that weird. Hollow Man, not Hollow Man. Um, <laughs> um, but other than that, like, it, Hollow Man from, I think it was 2000, I think. Yeah, 2000. Um, dude, it was a solid movie. It's a basic premise, Invisible Man. Literally, like, I know it's an adaptation of Invisible Man, but same concept for the most part. You get invisibility, and then you're like, hey, you know what? I can do what I want, because you can't see me, bitch. And then you do whatever you want, and you do bad things, and then, yeah, stuff happens. Uh, but it was a solid movie. Watched that, and then after that, we followed it up. Uh, the next day, we watched, um, An American Haunting, because we've been talking about Bell Witch, which in turn made us more interested in Bell Witch. After watching that, oh really? Yes, I want. I want to do That's like. Kind of uh, cool I really want to deep dive Bell Witch. And it's funny because Mrs. Sim was like, "We don't need to watch this." 
I don't. Bellwitch is from Tennessee. We don't need to be dabbling in that. I'm like, look, just because you watch the movie and you talk about it, she's not just going to appear at your damn house. That's not how this works. Right. Uh, you don't know, man. Could happen. But uh, Bell Witch was interesting. I definitely want to. I would love to do a segment where me and Christian go over Bell Witch stuff and talk about it and like research. Um, especially, yeah, I think that would be a lot of fun. We watched that. And then, other than that, we have also watched The Exorcism of Emily Rose, which stars, I'm going to say her name's Jennifer Carpenter off the top of my head. She was in Dexter. She's in it. That's her name. Okay. Bam. Look at that. That's it. Nailing it. Um, there's a lot I want to watch. Uh, Sick is one that's on my radar. I haven't watched it. It's a Peacock original. Um, and also the time of recording this when this is coming out. Actually, as this is gracing your ear holes. And uh, then tomorrow, uh, October 12th, I believe Fall of the House Usher comes out, which I am extremely excited for. Um, I really liked Midnight Mass as well as Haunting a Hill House and all that. And then Friday the 13th, me and Christian haven't talked about this, and I found out about it uh, beginning of October, and I'm super excited, but Suburban Screams, done by John Carpenter, comes out on, I believe it's Peacock, and I am oh, nice. stoked. It's a series, and I can't wait. So we got some stuff coming out, and I'm, I'm pretty pumped about it. Uh, but other than that, that's about it for me. Just spooky season, prepping for Halloween, and enjoying the goodness that is spooky season. What about you, Christian? What have you been into this past week? Uh, this past week has been busy, par for the course for me. Uh, I did get to watch Final Destination, which was awesome. Uh, that's one of my, you know, personal favorites. I like to watch it every spooky season, and I also like to watch it, you know, kind of the start of spring is one of those the horror movies that I watch. I don't really know why that's the case. I think it's because around springtime, you got people going to prom and stuff, and even though that movie has nothing to do with prom, I like to watch at least the first one, and then I start getting into the other ones. Uh, and they get progressively more and more high school until they're not. Um, but yeah, so I watched that for sure. Um, and I wanted to start uh, Stir of Echoes. It's just, it was just kind of hard to find streaming. I did find it. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, I found it and I can't remember. I did find it. I think if I found it on Tubi, I think. I didn't I find think, it there. I'm it trying to remember where Tubi. I found it. Um, hell, I don't remember now. I found it somewhere because I had to look for it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely want to watch that. I know we talked about that on the last episode. And then uh, because you watched Hollow Man and enjoyed it, you finally saw it. I want to watch it again. It's been a while since I've seen it, uh, but I do remember it being a solid movie. And I remember when that movie came out and I watched it for the first time, I thought the CGI was excellent. Probably doesn't hold up as much now, but back then it was fantastic. Um, so definitely getting in, getting into that. Uh, I plan to do a Friday the 13th marathon um, starting Friday the 12th. Because, uh, full disclosure, I will be uh, a, a married man on the 13th of this October. So that will be one of the things that, that we do uh, before we tie the knot, is to have a whole day of watching all the Friday 13ths we can digest before uh, before we have to you know do other things, prenuptials and whatnot. So we're going to do that for sure. And then aside from that, uh, I have been thinking about list a list in which we will talk about here in just a second on our next segment um i haven't had the time to read uh recently i guys i've been really wanting to read some horror stuff i just haven't had the time but i am making time so hopefully uh the next time we record an episode i'll have more uh things that i've read so we'll see what happens on that but aside from that that's all i've been doing and we'll jump right in oh wait no i lied i did do something else i did play mortal Kombat since the last time we recorded and uh i know that sin you were just talking about finishing up invasion mode i actually finished invasion mode like a little while ago and i don't remember if i brought it up on the on the pod but i did finish it and i've actually just been going back through it fighting some of the bosses to level up other characters because as you guys know from my complaining on the last episode leveling up your characters and your cameos takes such a long time it is such a grind and my mind cannot be changed on that and i know that we're not getting any of the newer characters until next year um, it sounds like a lot. It's not that long. It's like four months out, but that four months is going to be a long wait before we get new characters. And I will probably end up dropping the game and just playing Lies of P um, next month sometime, or this month sometime, the end, about the middle of the month. So we'll see what happens with that. But I do have Lies of P. It's ready to be installed, and I do want to play it. But aside from that, we can jump right into the next topic. All right, Lies of P. I want to check out Lies of P. 
I want to check it out. I also think Lazy P is gonna piss me off though. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, for sure. It's it's like it's a Souls game, like yeah, you know, Souls and Elden Ring and all that. Same type of thing. You just have a preset character that you play instead of making your own character, and uh, that makes it a little easier, I will say, but also a little harder because that's one of the best parts about those games is making your characters. Um, but playing as this Pinocchio character is is fun. The game is unforgiving. I've seen a lot of gameplay on this where people are just getting just destroyed. Uh, playing some of these bosses and i am not the best souls player out there so i know i'm gonna die a lot and i'm just gonna so see you're gonna start lies of p honest. whenever you know this month also spider-man drops you know what i'm glad that you said that because it totally left my mind but at the time of this recording the spider-man like cgi trailer actually dropped finally and i watched it two twice last last night i think and uh, it looks good. Obviously, everything that we've seen on the game looks great. The trailer looked great. We got to see Peter and Miles going up against Venom. We finally got to see what Venom's going to look like, even though we've already seen him in like, pictures and whatnot. We got to see him in action. So that was cool. I really liked that trailer. It was short and sweet. It was just the two Spider-Man characters pumping themselves up, giving themselves a motivational you know, t- talking to, as it happens in all the Spider-Man films. And they're just, they both say that I am Spider-Man at the same time, and they go in for you know, go into the fight with Venom and it looks so good. Um, but yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. I know that I'm going to die a lot playing Liza P. So I think that a good break from the monotony for me losing so much will be playing Spider-Man. And like I said, I got, this is going to be a busy month for me, not with just spooky season, but with, you know, some real life stuff I got going on. So we'll see how much time I actually get to play those um, in general, but I'll let you guys know on the pod for sure. And if you guys have any recommendations of things you want me to play, let me know anything that you guys think I might like. Let me know. You guys kind of know how I am. I talk about the games I love and not so much love on this game, on this uh, podcast. So you got some suggestions. You should let both of us know because we love to sit down and try some new stuff. So Uh, full disclaimer on the Spider-Man, I'm a hundred percent going to play it because I love the other one, but I might Mm -hmm. wait as hard as it's going to be. I know it comes out end of end of this month, but I might wait towards Christmas and make that be like a Christmas thing. And like, yeah. or Black Friday sale, which it probably won't be on, but in case it is, I might wait on that and take my time with that one. Uh, I say that now, and it might not happen at all. Might be, but that's what I that want actually, to do. That's a really good idea, Sin, because with what's going on for me right now, I even if I get Spider Man, just because Christmas time, like I played, I think I played the other one. I got it for Christmas, like a. Maybe it was last year or the year before. I don't remember. Whenever. But uh, I played it after the holiday, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed Just like, not even on stream, just playing it off stream, just immersing myself, doing side missions, just swinging around. Just, I, like, I really, really had a good time with it, so I kind of want to do that again. Um, I may, I probably will end up streaming it. Uh, some, I don't know. We'll see. But, yeah. I, I didn't think about this, but I'm, like I said earlier, I'm glad that you said that because – for me, when the first one came out, the first Insomniac Spider-Man game came out, I bought it. I bought it around Black Friday for myself because I bought the PS4 that had Spider-Man with it, and I literally didn't even open the box for the PS4 until Christmas Day, and I I hooked it up and I played it all all night. I didn't get to play it that day, but I played it all night, and I enjoyed it. It was one of the better experiences that I've had. So I might actually do the same. Even if I do get the game physically before the holiday season, I'll probably wait to play it till the holiday season just because the nostalgia from playing Spider-Man 4 that night at Christmas was awesome and Into the New Year as well was so cool. I really liked that, and I used my free time to play that. So that that'll be a good, uh, a good thing to do for me. I just have to really stay offline because people will be you know, streaming the game and playing it and getting through it in a, you know, a day or two. So I'll definitely have to save myself that uh that pain but other than that that's a good that's a really good idea all right well we're not gonna dilly dally we're not gonna mess around this episode so we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes potatoes of this episode and we alluded to this last week and that would be we would like to rank since we are talking about scream the scream killers in order from boo boo shoes worst or the least favorite. Probably Boo Boo Shoes Worst is a little harsh. The least favorite to favorite killers. And how we're going to break them down would be not by splitting them up, 
but by a movie is how I think is the best way to probably do it. So, for example, if you liked um, Nancy Loomis and Mickey and Scream 2, that would be one. Like one, you would place them in whatever ranking. So I think that's how we're going to do it. Christian, that's how you did yours? Yes, I did. Okay. So j- just once again, the, the this this list, this ranking, isn't uh, a ranking of the movies themselves. Right. It's the killers just within the killers. those movies. Yes. All right. Absolutely. Well, we always like to start from the bottom because we started from the bottom mm-hmm. and then we're then we're here, you know, kind of thing. That's right. All right. So uh, I am. I'll start that list up. I'll start that uh, well, list up just full disclaimer before we go in. Christian is a a much bigger Scream fan and definitely holds it way more dear to his heart. While I really do enjoy Scream and the franchise and everything Wes Craven did, I. I'm not going to lie, there's several that I'm like, I don't really fully remember it. I would need to watch again, and I didn't because your boy's been busy. But I'm still ranking them based on my memory of them all. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to go from there. So his list will have definitely some more insight. Mine is probably less insightful. Definitely. So to start the list off at number six are my, my least favorite killers. Uh, but actually, before I start that, I'm going to do this. Uh, for those of you other Scream enthusiasts, there are two other Scream killers um, that we don't really get to see in the movies that were in Scream 6, and that would be Jason. And uh, I actually don't remember Jason's partner's name off the top of my head. I think it was Greg. Uh, J- yeah, Jason and Greg. So I don't really count them. Uh, I, I'm acknowledging that they exist right now because technically Jason did kill someone. Uh, and he killed the first person in the movie of Scream 6, so he is being acknowledged currently, um, though I'm not going to count him on my list because he wasn't a main killer. Uh, It's just a little easier for me that way, but he is a bonus, so you guys know that I am acknowledging his existence and that he did kill Samara Weaving's character at the beginning of Scream 6. Now that that's done, starting at the actual number six, and I lump the killers together, and I'll talk about them separately a little bit. But coming in at number six, the bottom of the list for me will be the killers from Scream 6, which would be, I'm sorry, Scream 5, which would be Richie and Amber. Um, I don't hate them as killers. I just have them on the bottom of the list because at the end of the day, Richie is pretty incompetent when it comes to doing his job. And Amber did most of the killing. Plus, she killed Dewey. So, I mean, if I had to rank them in individually, she would definitely come uh, ahead of Richie. Um, Richie's reveal also wasn't, you know, fun for me. I... I thought it was him at the beginning of the movie, like not the first scene necessarily, but the second scene where he's eager to go to, uh, where he's eager to go to Woodsboro with, with Sam and all that. I was just like, I'm not really feeling the the vibe of this guy. He doesn't know anything about, you know, uh, stab and all this stuff. And he's watching the stab marathon on Netflix throughout the movies because he's trying to do research and he's eating pizza and all this stuff. I was like, this dude is absolutely 100% one of the killers. And then with Amber, I knew she was one of the killers, like her first scene, because they try to do the the uh, red herring thing with her, and it doesn't work very well. She's like super, super overprotective of this character. She's super, super overprotective of 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 uh, I forget her name right now, but Wednesday's actress's character. I can't remember her name. But oh, she, she's um, super like just it's Jenna Ortega. Yeah, she, with, with her character. So it made sense later on. I found out in the original script that those two characters were actually an item. They were together, um, but they took that relationship out of the movie and the final script for some reason. I don't know why. It made it would make more sense if they were dating each other for the motivations that she has, but they took that out, and I'm just like, whatever. But I do have Amber over Richie on that ranking, but if we lump them together, which we are doing for the sake of this, they come at number six for me. They're just not the most fun killers. Amber did get uh, a really, really good kill in for me. Um, with Wes, I really enjoyed that, and then I also liked um, her kill with Dewey with the with the double stab. Even though killing Dewey is a big no no for me, and I hate her forever for it, I hate the writers for it as well. I understood that he was going to die going in. I knew why he needed to die, needed to die. Um, but like I said, movie notwithstanding, just the characters at the bottom of the list for me, just because they weren't the most entertaining killers for me, and the reveal was you know pretty fucking lame. So there's that. 
What about you, Sid? Who's coming in at number six? Number six for me is The Killers. Detective Bailey, Ethan, and Quinn from Scream 6. I felt like, to me, that was the weakest part of the whole damn movie. Uh, Quinn stood out kind of immediately. I was like this promiscuous chick that is kind of, I don't know. She just she stood out like a sore thumb in that group really bad. She didn't really seem like she fit. And I was like, ah, she's overcompensating for something. Weird noises in her room. Like, I just, yeah, I didn't, I didn't like it at all. Um, obviously, uh, Ethan kind of was targeted the whole time. It made it obvious for yeah. a rightful reason. And then Detective Bailey, if you listen to him early on, you're like, it's him. Like, he makes things like, if anybody messes with family, they die. Like, this, I'm like, okay, yeah. this is blatantly obvious, and it's a really weak reveal. Like, when they revealed, I was like, oh, wow, I never saw that coming. They bring up at one point, they're like, all this scream memorabilia was police evidence. Therefore, spoiler, it would have to be a cop. Like, you don't need the damn Bruce Wayne, Batman, greatest detective to figure that shit out. So I was like, not a great reveal to me, so I put them uh, dead last as far as my, my okay. rankings of killers. That's fair. All right, uh, you number want me to go to number five, five and keep rolling? Wait, what? Well, go ahead, do number five since you just did number six. Yeah, please, all right. by all means. Five. Um, mm. Okay, five, you brought up a really good point. I was actually going to rank... Scream 5 higher, but you did bring up a lot of really good points, so I'll go ahead and go with you the same on uh, uh. <laughs> Okay, no, yeah, I'm gonna go with you. I'm gonna go with you the same. I really do like Jack Quaid, uh, but yeah, Richie was kind of a dumbass. You're right. You brought up a lot of valid points there. Um, so I'm going Scream 5. Which would be Richie and Amber. Um, their points for killing Dewey, but as you said, you kind of needed to start taking out them. And it's kind of, especially with you bringing new blood and new main characters, the existing old ones that have been there for a while, it only makes sense they're going to take them out. And Dewey was a likely target that you kind of could see coming. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I'd put them as number five, Scream Five. It's really funny. Uh, number five for me is actually Detective Bailey, Ethan, and Quinn, the family of killers. The reason why I feel they like they could have wrote for me. the reveals, and yes, I understand. Like you have little subtle hints, but I feel like you could have hit it a little better to make it be like yeah. you question it more. The only saving grace to six yeah, for I, me was the fact that they kept curveballing you to Kirby. Like there was multiple times, like well, maybe Kirby went off and did it, like. But, yeah. It... I, will, I will say this. I'll say this. A few, if you would have asked me this question, if I would have been doing this ranking just a month ago, I would have ranked, uh, ranked them higher, the family of killers higher. Um, but then I realized why I was ranking them higher. And um, it, it's not because I think that they're cooler killers. They just did some stuff in the movie that I thought was cool. So that was the difference. But as a killing unit, as a cohesive killing unit, um, they weren't my favorite one. So that's why they're coming in at number five. And I, I got to say, like, the reason why I had them higher up on this list originally is because there are two things that happened in this in this movie the killers did that I thought were awesome. One of them was when they were stabbing the shit out of Mason Gooden's character. I can't remember his name right now. Chad. Um, in the movie. Ch Chad, yes, thank you. Uh, when they were stabbing the shit out of Chad, I love that. I love when they ganged up on him, stabbed the fuck out of him, and then they did their like double knife wipe. But like, that isn't conducive of being a killer necessarily. That's just a cool scene that was in the movie after they didn't even kill this guy because he's not dead, right? So they're in also they get killers. dead last because they didn't kill anybody. Nobody dies exactly. really. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the other point. They didn't actually really kill anyone. Their dad, Detective Bailey, when he was wearing the mask, actually killed some fuckers, man. He blew some people away with a shotgun as Ghostface. So that was cool. I really liked the scene where they were chasing Gail and we thought Gail was going to die, but she didn't. Like The scene was cool. The killers doing their thing was cool, but they didn't actually get the job done. That's I wonder if this was planned five. because the sequel should be Carnage Candy and higher kill count and it's 
probably the lowest kill count of a scream. I wonder if they did that like, haha, fuck you. Right. It could have been. Like, like I said, some people died, but not the right ones died no. in the movie. And like I said, I really, really love Chad and Mindy, the characters, but at least one of them should have definitely, you know, bit the dust in that movie. With that said, though, I'm not here to rank the movies just the killers. Because those killers didn't get the job done, they come in at number five. I know that people are thinking to themselves, oh, my God, if they didn't really kill anybody, how come they came above Richie and Amber? The reason they came above Richie and Amber is because even though they didn't kill the people they were supposed to kill, their plan was still a little more cohesive than Richie's and Amber's. Because here's the thing. If Richie's and Amber's plan would not have worked at all if Sam didn't turn around and go back to the house the end of the movie if she never went back to that house their whole plan was was fucked they were fucked nothing would have worked out it would have been just um it would have just been uh, amber at the house by herself i guess killing people maybe not maybe just be like fuck it i don't want to do this anymore like i'm not sure but if the characters weren't complete dumbasses in that film th- their plan wouldn't work but because that's how it went for the sake of the film which we're not really talking about the quality of the film they did do some work. They did kill one of my, my absolute favorite character of the entire franchise was killed by one of those killers. Um, but with, without that kill, they would have been on the bottom. So they're number six. Number five is the family of killers, Detective Bailey, Ethan, and Quinn. Um, and then I'll keep going. Number uh, five for me, I'm sorry, number four. Number four for me would be Jill, Roberts, and Charlie from Scream 4. So this killer from Scream 4 happened to come in at number four for me. The reasons why they're number four is because the killer reveal for Charlie wasn't really as fun as I wanted it to be. It, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, came, it, it just happened and he was one of the killers and he wasn't the most competent of the killers. Jill was really the one with the plan. She was really doing all the work. She wanted to get caught, which, I mean, I'm sorry, she didn't want to get caught. She wanted to be kind of like Sydney. She wanted to be the new Sydney, kind of write herself into it, writing books with with Gail and whatnot. And I thought that was a cool motive and it made a lot of sense because it mirrored what was happening at the time. Kids will do anything to be famous. People in general will do anything for the 15 minutes of fame and to have money and to have people who like them. And she says something in that movie that guaranteed her spot at number on this list for me at all, which was, I don't need friends. I need fans. And I was like, that's, that speaks to so many people that I know in real life, so many people that I see online in general, just out in the world living their life for other people to watch. Like, it just makes sense. And it, it that movie's commentary was hitting it. But like I said, we're not talking about the movie. We're talking about the characters, the killers themselves. Those killers did get some work done. Their plan wasn't the most thought out. But Jill really thought that she was good. If she had killed Sydney in that movie... She would have won. Like that would have been the first ghost face killer that would have won. And we would have saw another movie with her doing her thing again. So she's a very competent killer. Charlie was absolutely like her simp and she just had him doing stuff for her. But I really, really liked Jill as a killer. It was really good. Seeing her turn was different too, because the first time I watched that film, I did not know she was the killer. I had no idea. I hadn't even suspected her because uh, she was just kind of in the background there. She was in most of the scenes. But she didn't do anything. She was just there and she was the victim. She was the Sydney. And, you know, looking back at it, she's totally the fucking killer. But the first time I saw the movie, I just wasn't wasn't ready for that reveal. I just didn't see it coming. Came out of nowhere. She said, uh, I'm not the girl you cheat on. She shot her ex-boyfriend in the fucking dick like so uncomfortable to watch dude like oh my god and that guy sucked anyway trevor was his name trevor was a nothing character so i couldn't wait to see him die and i didn't think he was the killer at all it was such a red herring but i gotta say didn't know it was jill the first time i watched it and that stood that stuck with me i didn't like some things in the movie but like i said many many times we're not talking about the movie just the killers and she was a fantastic killer sin what is your number four Number four for me is, shocker, Scream 4, Jill Roberts and Charlie Walker. Um, I'm going to be honest, I can't remember a lot about this movie. It's probably uh, the one I've seen. It's been the longest since I've seen this one, I think. Um, So I don't really remember a lot. But Emma Roberts as Jill Roberts and Rory Culkin. Um, I'm going to give them number four just because... It's a good place for him. I don't really have a lot to say on him, so I don't know. Um, you had a lot of good points, so we're going to stick with that. Kind of riding coattails on okay. that one. Yeah, I mean, 
I, like I, I feel you. I really like them as as killers, dude. Like, well, her, him, not so much. I really, really like Jill as a killer. Um, so there's that. So sin, move on. Give us your number three, man. We're into okay. the top three now. Give I'm, three. I'm having a really tough moral dilemma on my three. So if you've been keeping okay. score on which movies I've picked, I have the top the the first three screams to essentially rank. I am having a very hard dilemma on things. Um, do you want me to? Do you want me to go first? No, you know? it's it's fine. I I wanted to rank this higher, and I wanted to move it up. I wanted to move it up to as high as two, but I'm gonna leave it where it's at, and I'm gonna leave Scream Three right there, and I'm gonna put Roman Bridger as the number three killer. The and the reason I wanted I him to Roman be Bridger. higher was because he is the only solo ghost face killer. Every other one has multiple killers. He's the only solo, which I can greatly appreciate. The director that starts killing his cast. I wanted to put him higher, but a good conscience thinking about the other two, I can't. So he's going to stay at number three for me. Okay. Um. My number three, I also have Roman Bridger, director, because, uh, like you said, he is the only solo killer, and I don't like him more than the other killers on this list, for sure. I like him more than the killers that we had yeah. underneath, um, but I will say, Roman was almost number four. He was almost number four, and I was going to put Jill above him, uh, and I, I, part of me still wishes that I did, but it's too late now. we got to move on. The reason why I have Roman's number three, I, honestly, I believe he should have been number four and I should have had Jill on uh, before him. And this is why. Roman, as the killer, had a voice changer that could copy anybody's voice. Roman was the only killer. Roman had a motive for him that was so solid that he caused the killers from the first movie, at least the first one of the killers from the first movie, to be the killer from the first movie because of retcons and writing and whatnot. If all of that was the case... And he was that smart. There was no possible way that he should have failed in his mission of taking out Sidney Prescott. There's no doubt in my mind that if Roman was as good as he thought he was, as good as they want us to think that he is, there's no reason why he should have failed. There's no reason at all why he should have failed. Um, and that's my problem. And that's one of the reasons why I think I should absolutely switch him, make him number four, and then make Jill and Charlie number three. Because... Looking at it, I think I do like Jill much more as a killer. So I am going to retroactively switch that, make Roman number four, and make Jill number number three. But with Roman, because I know so much about the movie, I know that he wasn't meant to be the only killer. I know that he was supposed to have a partner, and it got changed because of rewrites, because the script got leaked a couple of times or whatever. So it gave us that to make him seem more competent of a killer. But if you really think about what was happening in his film and, and how he was, you know, going about his kills. He was really dumb. He had everybody's voice. He was ready to go. He had his plan that had been going on for years before Sydney was even in college, before she was done with that. He had this plan and it took him all this time and all these other killers to come to a conclusion that he was going to be the person to kill Sydney. And he still fails because Sydney is a survivor and, and they just can't take her out as of the time it's recording anyway. So yeah, Roman's number four for me and Jill's number three, because there's no, no reason why Roman, not only is he the only solo killer, he's the only killer that was able to have a different voice that was mimicking someone else's perfectly with this little voice change that he had there. I just, I just, it's hard to take him seriously when you think about that. And like I said, that's not even the movie that's not me talking about the movie. That's me talking about him as a character. He had everything he needed to, to, to kill one fucking person, and he still couldn't do it. So, yeah, he's definitely number four. Uh, but like I said, man, because of the movie and what we got, he was the only solo kill killer, so that's why he's so high up on the list. And, I mean, his plan was working pretty fucking well up until the end there, you know? So there we go. Um, and also, he did he did everything that he did in his movie – to get in touch with Sydney, to get her to come to where he was so that he could kill her. Like he's doesn't seem like he's as clever as, as we think that he is. So yeah, with that said, Roman is definitely number four. Jill is number three. And I will go ahead and give you guys my number two, which will lead you directly into my number one. But my number two pick of killers 
for uh, Scream is absolutely Nancy Loomis, Billy's mother, and Mickey Altieri. I love those two killers. I love Nancy Loomis or Debbie Salt. I love Mickey. I love the way that he manipulates Cindy, uh, Sydney in the movie. I love the way that he manipulates other people in the movie very, very softly, very easily, very just candidly. It doesn't seem like he's doing it during the movie, but I will say this is another example of a person calling out who the killer is at the beginning of the movie and then being right. And um, I remember Randy called it out. He was like, it's it's Mickey. It's got to be Mickey. Like He gave us the reasons, and then it ended up being Mickey with Nancy Loomis and he wanted to get caught. Like he wanted to get caught. He wanted to go on trial. He wanted to blame the movies. Like he wanted to do the exact opposite of what you know Billy wanted to do in the first one, which leads me to my number one, because you guys already know my number one is obviously Billy and Stu. There will never ever be two ghost face killers better than Billy and Stu. They're just the best. And it's not because they're the first ones. They're the OGs. It's because they're literally the best. Their plan was damn near foolproof. The only thing that really fucked them up is they get too much into character, right? Billy is a fucking psychopath and he gets too he he gets off on what he's doing so much so that he forgot to just pay attention. Same with Stu. He's so much of a psychopath and I do believe that a bit of that was peer pressure. I think that that was honest when he said that. I think that he was definitely into Billy. I know that's been a long going thing. Those two killers are gay. I think that Stu was definitely into Billy and he wanted to please Billy any way that he could and we got what we got. And there's never been another reveal in any of the movies that's been so unhinged, but in a good way. Like, the acting was on point. Those two characters made sense. Their motives made sense. Like, the way that they went crazy made sense. Like, you can tell that they had been holding that shit in forever. It's Billy, not so much, because he always looked like a fucking psychopath, but Stu was already kind of crazy and hyperactive and just weird ADD energy all over the place anyway, but like, you could tell that he had been just holding that shit in and he was ready to fucking explode. So when he finally got to reveal himself as one of the killers, surprise, Sydney! Like, he was so happy, so ready, so into it. He had clearly practiced this moment. He was ready to go. And before he died, his last words were, his parents were going to be so mad at me. And I love it. So those those are my rankings for the Ghostface Killers. Uh, Sin, let's hear yours. All right. Well, after... Um conversating with my colleagues behind me right here if those on youtube that see him we have a lovely scarecrow holding a pumpkin uh that shall not be named for purposes but purposes. he's here and after discussing with him and the witch that's too damn tall to uh you can't see her because she's too damn tall we're gonna just call her too damn tall at the moment i think she was called like gretchen or something i don't remember but uh <laughs> after conversing with him my list was gonna be Pretty much the same because as I've spoke many times before, originals usually cannot be top to me. And they can't. But after deliberation and debate just now and talking to my colleagues behind me, I have decided that my number two, and this pains me a little say, is Scream to the Scream. It's Scream. I'm going Billy Loomis and Stu Mocker. Number two, it hurts me a little to say. Literally, I can wow. put them at number one anytime. Uh, more on Billy. I just like how Billy looks really evil all the time. He just, he's like a Johnny Depp looking person, but if he was always pissed off in like a really dark side. And like Christian said, the, the reveal is amazing. Just, I really have no complaints with them as killers. At all. I really enjoy it. I like all of it. The manipulation. Everything. Super good. Um, and full disclosure, going into this, they were my number one. But like I said, I had a debate with my colleagues. And for the sake of argument also. Um, and for reasons I will explain. My number one. You can figure it out. And the fact that I didn't want to go in direct reverse order of the movies. Because I have pretty much. <laughs> Scream 2. Nancy Loomis and Mickey. Um, my only complaint with them is Mickey to me is very, you could tell right away, A, he's a film student who always has a damn camera, which plays right into the lore of Scream and the killers and how they want to do stuff. Um, and he looks evil. Like, like Christian said, he wants to get caught. You can kind of tell. 
My thing that I really liked was Nancy Loomis. The fact that she was Billy's mother. Yes, she abandoned him, and that's probably why he went, or that's part of the reason why he went Looney Tune. Um, but the fact that she's in it, the movie from the first killing, as a reporter that you just assume is a reporter like a, a standing extra, like she's there, she's kind of annoying. You have Gail doing her thing. You have all these other reporters, and she's there, and she's kind of just getting the shit in the deal the whole time. So you don't really have a reason to be like, oh, that reporter's suspicious. Like, there's no reason to point to her. And then when she does reveal, you're like, well, why in the hell is she a killer? And then you find out all of it, and it's like, it's a really good written reveal and character, I thought. I really enjoy it. So for the sake of argument, and my colleagues behind me, Scream 2, Nancy and Mickey, take number one. It does hurt me to say that, though, because I really love Billy and them. And that and Scream 1 is my favorite of the franchise. I'm just saying. I'm just going to throw that out there. Just, we're just going to put that there. Are your favorites in, in yeah, the I, I, Yeah, Scream 1 is – I don't think you'll top Scream 1. Although I do have enjoyed the new ones quite a bit. Scream 1 to me – yeah. Scream 1 just changed a lot of stuff, and it took risks that were amazing. So – I agree. So, yeah. There we go. I wanted to change it up, and I changed it up, damn it. And I actually have a good reason. I think – Normally, nine times out of ten, I probably would go with Billy, but I do think there is an argument to make Nancy and Mickey number one. I think there's a valid argument. I think that is a good reveal. I think how they did her was really good, and that for itself makes them a strong argument for number one, and I'm giving them number one today. They get that trophy. Congratulations. I don't don't think that there's necessarily a wrong answer for having No, I mean, it's personal preference on how what you liked killer-wise. I'll I'll say that... I love Mickey as a killer. I love Debbie Salt or or Nancy Loomis as a killer as well. I love them as a team, if you will. The reason why Billy and Stu went out over literally everyone for me is because there they had a plan. They saw that plan through. The reveal was awesome. The way that they revealed themselves in general was awesome. Their personalities fit all of that. We got adequate time with both of them, and that doesn't always happen, right? We see Debbie Salt a few times. We got some Mickey, and even in the deleted scenes, if you are a fan and saw the deleted scenes, we get even more Mickey, so it makes more sense. Roman, the only thing we really got of him was him bitching and complaining, and then he was also dead, which I didn't talk about. And apparently he gets his pulse checked, and he's still just dead. So either Gale is a fucking moron, all of a sudden, well, or he can just like drop his heart rate at, at a whim and be fine. So I, he just has Batman training, but he still can't kill one. Maybe he took person. some kind of pill. So, sure. I don't know. Like, I'm just but, trying to play devil's like, advocate like, here. I don't know. No, I, no, I know, but I, I've heard that said before. And I'm just like, show me, don't tell me for this yeah. type of movie. You have to show us. Um, with 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 Jill and, and Charlie in Scream Four, like like I said, Charlie is practically a nothing character. I love Jill. I think she's super competent. I love her motive. I love how crazy she actually is, and that she's a part of Sydney's family. So like, crazy runs in her family. I loved all of that. Richie and Amber were just kind of dopes. You know what I'm saying? Like they're just just not fun, really. Richie was really annoying and kind of a a man baby. Like he was explained. Wow, my headphones just popped up. But um, Sam explained him the best way. He's just a man baby. And it's very true. And Amber was just like super knife happy. So we got some really cool kills with her. But as as a killer and as being a competent killer and just like getting away with it and all that stuff, there's no fucking way she was going to get away with it. And she had a really cool death as a killer. So I really enjoy that because she's so annoying. Um, Jason and Greg, like we only saw Jason kill somebody. We didn't see Greg kill anyone. Um. And then the family of killers with Detective Bailey, Ethan, and Quinn. I really like the line, who gives a fuck about the movies at the beginning of that? Once they took Jason out, I love their double stab where they didn't even kill Chad, so that was cool. Um, but their motives itself was kind of stupid because, like, who gives a shit if, if Sam killed your family member? He was a serial killer. Like, literally planned to murder this woman just because he liked these movies so much. Like, there's no... There's no justifying that you know what i'm saying so it's just it's kind of stupid but but that's my ranking of all these characters um i i love scream i, I actually don't dislike any of the screams that's the only horror franchise the only horror franchise where i don't have a movie that i hate and i literally can't say that about any other 
any other horror franchise, at least that I can think of off the top of my head. Because wow. if I'm thinking like the big three, you know, Jason, Freddy, Michael, there are there is at least one movie in there for some of them, more than one movie in there that I just hate. And then even even Chucky has some movies that just aren't aren't great. He has one that I really, really don't like. I can't say that I hate it, but I really, 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 really don't like it. And then he has others that just aren't fun to watch. So there's that. But like he has the other franchise that has, you know, a pretty good track record of the films. And then and now he has a series which season three started uh today at the time of this recording. So there's all that going on. But with that said, guys, that's my ranking. That's Sin's ranking. Uh, and I know we got other stuff to talk about, so we'll move on. All right. Well, that uh, actually, we don't have anything to talk about. We have a damn thing else to talk about. We're running a little low on time. So, <laughs> uh, did you have anything else before we go to to the to the, the end? That no, I didn't. I did not. All right. Well, then, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, mammals, cats, chickens, ducks of all ages, it's time that you pass the whiskey. That's right. Get your whiskey. As we go into the last call. Question. I don't know why I did it like that, but we're doing it that way today. That's right. That's how you do last calls, apparently. It's canon. It's canon now. Yeah. Now I got to do it all central every time. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> um, I do. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, this week, I do have the last call question. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you now. We're talking about Scream. We've been mm-hmm. talking about Ghostface for mm-hmm. the last hour. I have a question that is Ghostface related, mm-hmm. also MK related. We all know oh, that God. the leaks have come out, and they have all but confirmed that Ghostface is going to be the uh, cameo um, movie killer for this game okay. that we'll get sometime next year. I'm assuming like April. So next April, when they finally release Ghostface, what do you think, or what do you want? Excuse me, it's a better question. What do you think his fatality should be? Mm. I know most characters have two fatalities, but for the sake of argument, if you can come up with one that you think should be a fatality mm. for that character, what, what do you think it should be? It's going to be knife-oriented, 100%. He's going to pull out a knife. Of course. Um, honestly, it'd be really sick if he just stabbed the piss out of him a lot, like, either takes him down somehow, like, whether it's just grabbing him, bring him down, or, like, grabs him from behind, like, arm around, like, their neck, and just starts, like, going in, and then as they hit ground, he just, like, goes in berserk mode and just blood flying as he's just stabbing the piss out of him, just going ham. I think that'd be pretty sick, and then maybe even, like, stab him in the forehead or something at the end and leave it. Uh, okay. I have two fatalities. Excuse Off the top of my head, that's, I'm just trying to think of, because he's not going to, Ghostface is not going to overpower and, like, rip somebody in half. He's not, like, a Jason or something. So I'm trying to think, like, based on, like, his physical attributes yeah. and stuff, you know? Well, I, I know that the, the, the last call question is always, like, you know, out of the blue for you. Since I've had a little bit more time than you have, so think about this. Let me tell you what I think the fatality should be, and then you can piggyback off of that to help you a little bit. Uh, so for one of them, I think it should literally be a recreation of Scream 1, the very first kill in the movie where they take out Casey Becker, or um, I can't even think of the actress's name right now, but the first first kill of the movie, for those of you who are watching, Casey Becker's... Drew Barrymore? Her, where is she? Drew Barrymore, thank you so much. Where did Casey Becker go? I know she's on here. There she is, down at the bottom, right there. So you want her, like, crawling away and stuff, and then she gets, like, hung up in a swing? I think think what should happen is uh, Ghostface, during the fatality, stabs them in the back. They fall down, and then he turns them around and goes to stab them a bunch of times. Like, not a bunch, but, like, two or three times, like, really, like, viscerally. And then the last one, the character pulls off Ghostface's mask, but we don't see it because it's from uh, a different Ghostface point of view or whatever takes the mask off and then we get the knife in the air like just kind of waiting to stab that person and it goes in and then it could it could even be like black and green because it's fatality for for stab or whatever I think that should be one of the fatalities and then the second fatality should be um the the kill is the, well the non-kill that we got from scream six where the two ghost faces come up and stab the shit out of the one character that's getting you know fatality or whatever and then at the end both ghost faces with preferably different masks they both wipe their blades off at the same time and then that'd be the end of the fatality and then you know 
the other ghost face kind of goes back off screen and then you can finish the, the game with your, you know, victory pose or whatever. I think those two would be fantastic um, fatalities for this character. They pay great uh, homage to the movies. And I think those are two of the kills that happen in those movies that could be recreated as a fatality without it being too over the top. And I assume Ghostface Mask is going to be one of the items that gets uh, not upgraded, but uh, one of the, the, the gear items that you can customize. So I, I assume that it's going to be uh, the devil ghost face mask that we see, the red one, the regular ghost face mask, the cracked one, probably the one from Stab where it's like greenish. Um, it probably is going to be the bloody one that, that you people wore like all the time Halloween. The, the chrome looking one should be one for sure. Uh, there's an orange one that we see and then also like the scarecrow looking one that, that, that looks like uh, – it looks like uh, uh, like like Tweed, I think, like Hay, hay Straw from 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 a uh, um, Scarecrow. I'm just this is me spitballing, but I think if they want an easy character, that's exactly what they should do. Those should be the mass. Other customizable items should either be different cloaks, like how much glittery, shimmery stuff is in those cloaks, or the actual knife itself, kind of like Rambo from the last game. You know, one of his knives, I think, was was one of the things you could customize. So. I think that'd be a really easy thing to do, and those two fatalities would be great. Like I said, this, the kill from the very first screen, first kill of the movie, where she takes the mask off and they stab her, and it goes into the credits for the film. And then the other one is the double kill that we didn't actually get as a kill from Scream 6, where they're stabbing Chad's character, and then they wipe the, the knives off at the same time. Like That definitely should be the fatalities, in my, in my opinion. Uh, Sin, if you have any other ideas after hearing what I said, please let us know. If not, then... I still like the stabbing a lot. Um, you could do it almost like Dewey in uh, five, just like the oh, with the double knife and the yeah, and, and split them open and stuff. Yeah, yeah, That'd be cool. You could do something like that just because, like I said, I'm he's not Ghostface is not going to rip somebody apart. It's not going to do a lot of that stuff. So it's going to be definitely knife oriented. I really do like the knife wipe at the end. I think that should be 100 percent included. Whatever fatality they do, a knife wipe at the end and kind of like then face the camera or something would be dope. Um, the cosmetics sound good. I definitely think custom, uh, one of the things will probably be a knife. It'll be different styles of knives. I don't really know how they'll do, how many they can do. The cloak could definitely be something as well. The mask will be the big one though. Cause that's the one they have the most variety of being able to do while keeping it true to the movie. Exactly. All right. Nice. That was a good question. Good question, sir. All the scream stuff. Um, Coming up soon, we have uh, some Halloween stuff. Surprise, surprise. Not like we've ever talked about the Halloween franchise here. That never happens. What? Um, what? This wouldn't be sipping with sin if we weren't talking about it. Yeah. And we made it a whole episode without getting pissed off by Halloween ends. Let's go. Shredding, shredding on thin ice here. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. But that's going to do it for this episode. We have run out of time. So... If you'd like your question to be featured in Last Call Questions, go to guilty.gg slash pack in the application, put them from the pod, and you'll be accepted. And then you can go down to where it says Sipping with Sin. There's a whole bunch of channels. There's stuff about episode chat, where you're sipping on, Christian's Corner, Sinister Tales, where you can put your stories about things that go bump in the night for us to talk about on the podcast, and Last Call Questions, where you can submit your Last Call Question to be featured on episode. Or you can hit us up on social media, at Sipping with Sin, S-I-P-P-I-N with Sin, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Threads. All those, you can drop us a line there. Hit us up. Say hello. We would love to hear from you. Drop your last call question. DM us that and uh, get featured. New Sipping What's In episodes come out every Wednesday, 8 a.m. Central Time on all audio platforms, Anchor.fm, Spotify, Apple, Overcast, Google, and more. Every Wednesday, 8 a.m. Go share it. Go follow, subscribe it. Enjoy it. All the stuff. I don't even know what all it is. Thumbs up it. Whatever the hell you can do. Positively do it. Rate it five stars. All that stuff. It helps us out a ton. Keep growing this community. Keep growing this audience. We are 83 episodes in. So keep it going. We appreciate you. We're rapidly approaching the 100 mark. Uh, also, if you enjoy the video versions on my personal YouTube, youtube.com slash I am sinister every Wednesday, 8 a.m. Central Time. Same as the audio version. It comes out on the video version on YouTube. Go thumbs up it, subscribe. We are getting close to a nice goal over there as well. So we greatly appreciate you. And comment like the legend Yobi likes to do. So we appreciate Yobi. So do that. Um, as Thank far you, as my Yobi. personal socials, if you'd like to hit me up, I live stream all week. And you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at I am Sinister TV. 
You can also find me on Threads at I Am Sinister TV, and you can find me on Facebook.com at I Am Sinister, or Facebook, yeah, Facebook.com slash I Am Sinister. Find me live streaming on Kick.com slash I Am Sinister. Come hang out, talk spooky stuff with me. Say I'm from the pod. Uh, podcast episodes may be filmed live uh, soon by the end of the year, maybe, over there on Kick. So come say hello. Uh, you can also find me on Twitch.tv slash I Am Sinister TV. And uh, I believe that is pretty much everywhere you can find me, I think. I don't know. I could be missing something. Could be wrong. But come find me. Come say hello. I'd love to hear from you. Christian, where can the lovely folks find you? You guys can find me on my personal Instagram that is all one word, Vin and Inc. You guys can also find me on my own personal horror podcast, The Horrorverse Pod, on all socials. You guys can also find me in one other place, which is the TikTok. You guys can find me my full name, just Christian Vincent, where I post horror-related material and artwork. I will also be posting uh, this month is uh, Inktober. Um, you guys, I think I talked about that last week on the pod. Um, like I said, I'm super busy so what i'll be doing instead of posting one art piece every day i'll just post a block of sketches that i have uh for the words at the end of each week because there's no way i'll have time to do it and if you guys comment and like those pictures i will post uh time lapse videos of me doing all the artwork for those i might even throw some color in but you guys gotta comment you guys gotta like before i do that because like i said i'm super busy this month but if you want to see it let me know and i'll make it happen but that's where you guys can find me all right ladies and gentlemen it's Spooktober. Don't go out there knocking over pumpkins. Don't disrespect the traditions. Because the spirits are watching. That's right. I said it. And I meant it. Hope you enjoy Spooktober. I hope you're enjoying spooky season and you're watching lots of scary films. Let us know what you're watching. Let us know your Scream Killer rankings. We would love to know that. Give us suggestions for stuff to watch. But until the next time. Until we meet again. You don't have to go home. You don't have to go to the graveyard. You don't have to go to the crypt. You don't have to go to the lagoon. But you gotta get the hell up out of here. Until next week. It's time for Christian shut the doors, lock it down tight. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another episode of Sipping with Sin. Be sure to leave a five-star review. We will be reading those pretty soon. Yobi, got some good ones to read from you. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you so much. It's gonna be great. But guys, this week, I'm gonna leave you with the same three words. I'll leave you with Every week, if you know those words, say them with me. If you do not, pay attention because they just might save your life, especially with it being spooky season, spook month. Guys, listen carefully. Those three words are as follows. Don't get gutted. See you guys next week. <laughs>